Hello, uh, welcome to this session on Open Education Champions. Uh, Open Education Champions is a chance to talk to important OE advocates and actors, uh, which is why we are talking to you, Ana Mura Santos. And um, uh, the intent is for students, teachers, pedagogues, and practitioners of open education like yourself uh, to discuss the importance of open education, uh, and to share experiences with facilitating the creation of more OER to inspire others to do the same, uh, underlying the role of librarians in this possible, in this process, sorry. Uh, so my name is Chris Mean. I'm a, I'm a, a assistant librarian at NUI Galway Library in Ireland, and I'm very pleased to welcome Ana Mura Santos from the Instituto Tecnico Lisboa of the University of Lisbon. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Okay. And uh, so my first question is, uh, can you tell us a bit about your work with OER or open pedagogy more broadly? How did you come to be involved in open education? Okay, so, so thank you very much for the contact, for the invitation. And uh, so I must add that I'm uh, a mathematician, so I teach um, subjects on linear algebra, calculus, and other subjects for uh, so our institute it's uh, and mostly for engineering uh, students mm -hmm. and uh, they have these uh, cross uh, courses on uh, these topics okay no so i've been teaching uh, these subjects for more than 10 years or almost 15 years and uh, so first my first contact was with the um, so with this, uh, I, I'm a fan of formative assessment because I think it's a way to keep uh, students engaged and more motivated towards the subjects. So uh, um, with some colleagues, colleagues of mine from the mathematical departments, we developed a, a system. So it's a, inside our uh, LMS, Learning Management System of our Technical Institute. Okay. For uh, so it's it's automatically delivering um, quizzes, let's say, and automatically graded with feedbacks. Um, and um, so uh, I try to share this uh, system, let's say, the, this uh, assessment system that was used not so much for the final grades of the students, but for having them uh, motivated. Uh, meanwhile, um, these uh, massive open uh, online courses emerged, like uh, from the from first from the American universities, and uh, so I I try to use the opportunity. So as soon as the edX uh, freed the code, uh, in our institute uh, we created um, our own platform. So it's uh, edX platform but customized and we uh, launched the first uh, online courses and uh, so our strategy is um, to create and design contents for our students so our enrolled students but at the same time they run so this these online courses run really free so without uh, charges on the okay. enrollment so um, in uh, in these MOOCs uh, that are, for instance, I use them in a flipped uh, classroom uh, strategy with my enrolled students, but they are at the same time uh, open for other participants. And okay. so in the discussion forums, my students and the other uh, more the external participants can um, so can share uh, doubts yeah. and uh, things like that. So I, I think the open online courses are really working well for both so for the internal students and the external participants uh, as well sounds great um sounds sounds fantastic um so uh at some point over your open education journey have you have you been uh, supported by librarians in some uh, in some way shape or form uh i no no <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's uh, I would say that uh, so for, first it was with the colleagues from the, the Department of Mathematics and then 
it was with a little team of graphic designers and uh, some is they came and go but one or other instructional design designer that helped to construct more pedagogical uh, structured uh, contents online because they are very much pretty much uh, based on videos so we uh, studied and uh, tried to produce and design uh, well designed uh, videos yes uh, short ones very precise ones and and things like that but uh, no librarians were not uh, at in the in this in those teams or okay would you would you see scope for for partnership at some points or, or involvement uh, in the future yes i think so i think so why okay. not yeah <laughs> okay perfect um who has uh, who has benefited from education uh, at your institution? Uh, would you say as well as beyond your institution? And what would you say have been the key benefits? Okay, uh, so with my first experience, the the one that is more connected to formative assessment of enrolled students, I would say the students because. Uh, uh, almost immediately, they, they they started to be more motivated and engaged in the in the subjects. So in the linear algebra or thing or calculus, and uh, so they, they usually I I questioned them at the end of the semester, and they were very happy to have these uh, kind of uh, quizzes to keep up uh, with the subjects, and. Uh, I, I found some resistance from uh, my colleagues to use only the, the this type, uh, so let's say these quizzes, even if they don't count much for the final grade. But uh, uh, so I, I would say that the academic world it's a little close. <laughs> so each professor thinks that he has the solution for. Uh, the right so, it's not the solution it's the right solution <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the all the problems okay and uh, we are not very used to share and compare and uh, discuss how we teach we do that with research we do more with that kind of uh, interactions with research and not so much with teaching and uh, so I would say with the assessment system, I would say that um, the, the students benefit the most. OK, and, but now, um, by the way, even with this system we, during the pandemic. So this was very interesting to see that during the pandemic, uh, everyone turned. How can we assess online and remotely the students? And uh, oh, Anna, Anna is working, was working already with some, some kinds of exercises. Let's ask her how the, how this works. And so the, there was a refresh on this uh, on the system. And now we, I have more colleagues of mine that use the uh, a similar so a similar system to to keep up with this uh, formative assessment of students in different subjects in me mechanical engineering and civil engineering so i have more colleagues to use this but of course with the MOOCs there are more people that benefit from the MOOCs okay first the, the students of course uh, the enrolled students in the in the courses the, the from technical Lisboa and then the other participants so we can see that uh, even the uh, we we have alumni so the the people that studied uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago at technical and want to refresh some topics they can go there and uh, and watch the videos and uh, discuss things that are more updated because these are stem subjects so evolving all the time mm, and sure. of course i could uh, share so by the way, uh, I, I think beginning with this semester, my colleagues are more alert. Alert also after the pandemic, I think everybody uh, watch more carefully all these online things. And uh, yes, and of course, my my strategy is already to keep the thing open, but not every time I can do that. So 
Uh, I keep it open uh, online courses, but uh, in the platform, sometimes the, the courses, the online courses run uh, closed only for enrolled students. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, what would you see as the key successes in the open education movement uh, so far? Uh, and um, I, I think you've talked a little bit about your own experience, but if there was something else you wanted to say about your own experience with it, what are the what are the really key successes? Well, as far as I know, I, I would say that. Uh, more or less the MOOCs, this MOOCs mo movement that started in some academic world. Um, and of course, this was for the more for the American reality that where the, the higher education is really expensive. So in Europe, I would say that public uh, higher education, it's not so expensive. But mm. anyway, I would say that uh, I can so when I open an online course, let's say in eigenvalues, eigenvectors or something very specific, and it can be uh, followed not only by my students, but the, even the students of another teacher that teach a little bit different and uh, they can see and compare. And uh, so everything it's, uh, in, uh, in these subjects, it's important and to be open. I yeah. not to mention students that are far away or are in the in inside some remote region in Portugal or even in Africa. So we have uh, these Portuguese speaking countries, okay, Angola, Mozambique, and uh, these courses are really open, so they can follow them uh, in even in mobile phones. I'm not mm -hmm. uh, already talking about uh, uh, some personal computers. And, and the, the the MOOCs that we're talking about when they're opened up, the, uh, these are these are opened up with open licenses. Is that right? Yes, and the, everything is uh, CC by licensing. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Very good. Um, so um, so so there's been some key successes, which is great. Um, uh, what would you say still needs to be done for open education to truly take hold? Well. Um... Well, I see that uh, even concentrate again in this uh, phenomenon of MOOCs, okay? Uh, they are not very popular here in Technical Lisboa. I, I think in uh, they, there are, so, let's say, there are examples in Holland and in, in the Netherlands that um, they are more adept of this kind of uh, flipped classrooms or blended learning strategies, and they use the MOOCs they produce in the classes. But uh, so in, uh, I don't know, but I, I even I share some uh, experiences with um, colleagues from Spain or France, and uh, this phenomenon is not so, uh, uh, how to say it? So, like, uh, widespread. So, so widespread as uh, in United States for the reasons oh. I, I, I'm, I am guessing that the reason is really because in our public uh, universities the it's not expensive the pandemic helped because everything every eyes turned to the remotely things and on the online contents this right. this helped but uh, the, till now i think uh, in some countries the academic world is too close it's not very keen to share experiences or all the experiences let's say and um and there is uh, work to do there i think there is yeah, a lot yeah. of work to I'm, do <laughs> yeah so in terms of the most pressing challenges is it a sort of a is it a culture change thing and then are, are there other things i would well? say cultural yeah 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 okay yeah um and uh, so uh, in that sort of context um, of, you know, uh, there being many challenges, um, wh what are your plans for the future with uh, open education? Um, what, what do you have coming up? Okay, so what, uh, well, first of all, try to convince as, much, as more as possible people <laughs> Yes. to embark in this uh, so now we have this platform so the the our customized edX uh, platform 
and we have like three domains and uh, I tried to convince my colleagues, okay, it's too, uh, it's a big work to produce a MOOC. Okay, so let not to produce a MOOC, you just record your lessons, you put them in chunks and you prepare some exercises and you, you can use first some uh, another domain that it's not so demanding about graphics, about things be, being done in a nice format and you have the experience and then you put the content uh, open, not only for your students, but also for other people. So this is this was like the first step. And then if they think that th this works, they can prepare then a MOOC that can be uh, more, um, it's more accurately done or more sophisticated, let's say with a little effort. And this MOOC can be open for everybody and uh, people, and also we encourage uh, to put, so we have uh, contents both in Portuguese and in English. So as usually for our undergraduates, we produce uh, in Portuguese, the contents, the educational contents are in Portuguese, but if the masters, uh, the courses are for master students, then we produce the audio in English and then we translate and everything, okay? But if you have uh, the product in Portuguese, it's very easy, it's not very easy because there is a, a dissemination problem here, but okay. But we can send these or send the, the um, just uh, the, the dissemination to Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, and, uh, and countries where the Portuguese is the, the official language and they, have hard times to to understand the English, let's say, and uh, even this is the first barrier, but then they also don't have very uh, high developed contents, let's say, or, sure. or very specific or very technical or things like that. Yeah, that, I mean, that sounds really important and that, that could have a big impact. Um, uh, so, but would you say like, it, you know, I was interested in you talking about you know, having these, you know, talking to your colleagues. So is it these sort of conversations that are really key to, to sort of moving, changing the culture itself? I would say that, yeah, 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 okay. really, yeah. Perfect. Um, Okay, well, uh, that, that's all. Uh, that's all very good. Um, was there was there anything else you'd like to to add uh, to what you've said so far? Well, and also, well, the, the other domain that we have in the platform, it's using it only for assessment, for assessment purpose. Perfect. And now that uh, the continuous assessment, uh, it's graded with more percentage that counts more for the final grade. Uh, so. This time I, I have already in this uh, semester more three colleagues of mine that are together with me applying the quizzes and uh, having uh, students um, to embark in this uh, more uh, active and uh, <laughs> they really like the quizzes because they sometimes they are very with good graphics, good presentation. It's better than a written exam or a, uh, some okay some questions in the paper and sure okay <laughs> they look at them students usually like <laughs> okay perfect perfect uh, okay um well if, if there was uh if there was uh um uh, if you didn't have any more you'd like to add to that, uh, I'll just say uh, thanks again for being here and uh, for this great conversation. And um, we really look forward to sharing it with the open education community. Okay, and thank you very much for the invitation and my pleasure. <laughs>